Hi. Welcome to the Cardboard Herald. My name is Luke. My name is Jess. And we're here to talk about the Matago uh, games. Recently, we got a, a surprise package from Matago of three different games that we know nothing about. And we thought it'd be fun to try this new format of just kind of talking directly to the camera and going over our experiences with these three games. Uh, we're going to take them one at a time. It's going to be three different videos. So this is part one of the trilogy. All right, so let's do this. All right. That took a lot of effort. Yeah. Um, so this is Karen. This is uh, the first of the three games that we're going to be covering. Uh, it is a two-player only uh, abstract style game. I would compare it to something like Onitama. You are trying to create three different, uh, I think they're called monoliths on the board. Yeah. Every time you take an action, the tile that you used flips over to the other side so your opponent doesn't have the same tools as you did. Different actions you can take is you can uh, move orthogonally or on the opposite side you can move diagonally. You can spawn in uh, the totem area with the white totems or the totem area with the black totems, depending on which side. And you can hop over a friendly character or you can hop over an enemy character, depending on which side. The two different rituals that you can potentially do is two friendlies adjacent to an enemy or two friendlies um, on either side of an enemy. And then every time you land on a monolith, um, you get the ability associated with it. Um, and no one owns the monolith. Anyone can use those things. And there's a, a nice little cheat sheet that you get to use to uh, figure out what the heck any of these do. Because the symbology is kind of hard to see. And, and, also, hard, and very easy to mix up, yeah, as we've seen. <laughs> as someone has already done. It was right above it. I'm just saying. Anyway. Strategically doing an option that might not be optimal for you simply because you know that if your opponent were to use it that you would be in a bad time yeah <laughs> but it's kind of really hard in this game to block anyone's progress like nine times out of ten there's always something you can do to move forward mm -hmm. um even if you can't leap over your opponent's figure you can move forward a space even mm -hmm. if you can't spawn in this region you can you usually have at least something to do that if you fall behind, it's hard to catch up without the rituals taking place. Yeah, I feel like the monoliths are kind of that catch-up mechanic a little bit. But sure. the thing, though, is that you do have to have a footing in order to even get them out onto the board. This is a surprisingly thoughtful game in mm -hmm. terms of how the, the mechanics play out and in terms of how you need to plan around everything. I've definitely made a move confident that I'm fine, and then someone else comes along and is like, uh, I just completed a ritual, you're dead. There's definitely very little theme here. Like, the rule book says that you're trying to win over the favor of Mother Nature, but it's the first one to three points wins. And that's fine. You know, this is an abstract game. It doesn't need to have a super thorough theme. Um... I think my biggest concern with this title is it doesn't do enough to make itself stand out from the crowd. Like, it's just kind of fine. It's it's fine. Like, it's fine. I don't I don't know what I... I, I yeah. No, I can agree with that. I mean, I think that it, do, it doesn't really introduce anything really new to the, to the board game industry. Not that it has to, to be a good game. It just doesn't have that um, typical competitive tug to it with right. a two-player game like it doesn't i don't feel like i need to wring his neck at the end of the game <laughs> that's fair um and you can sort of see the end coming yeah within probably i'd say two turns yeah because where you can be like all right like i i can math out what this person's gonna do i can't do anything to prevent it because they can block me out of what i would need to do it and the game's pretty much over at that point. I'll tell you what, I've had a lot more fun with this game than I expected to. The production value is pretty nice, the insert is well made, the miniatures are surprisingly uh, detailed for a low cost game like this. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's I would play it, I wouldn't go out and pick it up. If it was set up before me and someone said, hey, you want to sit down for a game of Karen? I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. I'll play a game or two. Yeah. That was Karen. Uh, thank you for checking out our review of Karen. 
Uh, please let us know in the comments what you thought, uh, and we're going to be po setting up and posting two more of these videos down the road, so keep an eye out for our n other two Matago games. Back to you, Jack. If you enjoyed this video, we have all kinds of other reviews, interviews, and recommendations via writing, podcasts, and video here on our channel and website CardboardHerald.com. Our content is audience supported, so if you want to show your support, please visit our Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.